Okay, so this is the last idea in the stereochemistry chapter. Um, this is actually in chapter five in the book, but it's stereochemistry, so I'm just going to lump it in here, and, and this is going to be um, this is going to be the main thing we talk about from chapter five, actually. And this is this idea that alkenes, right, double bonds, can actually be stereo or can be stereoisomers of each other because they satisfy all the definitions, even though they don't have sp3 carbons that have four different groups attached. And so this is again, we're getting into the kind of here's the weird exceptions to the stereochemistry rules, right? We defined enantiomers, we defined diastereomers, we talked about what those look like in compounds with one stereocenter. We talked about what those look like in compounds with two stereocenters. And then we started to get into the weird kind of um, exceptions to the rule, right? Meso compounds don't have an enantiomer. So that's weird. Alkenes can have diastereomers of each other. That's this video. And that's weird. And then once we get through all the exceptions, then we've pretty much finished the concept and we'll move on to uh, whatever is next, which is organic reactions. Okay? So alkenes. There we go. Alkenes and stereochemistry. All right, so let's start simple. Let's do um, dichloroethane, ethene, right? So this compound compared to this compound, right? First of all, are these compounds the same? The answer is no, right? They're not identical. We can't pick one up and put it on top of the other, right? So the chlorines are oriented in different ways. And notice that the chlorines are oriented different ways in space. The molecular formula is the same. The carbons are attached in the same way. The chlorines are attached to the same carbons, all that other stuff. So they're not identical, but they're not constitutional isomers of each other either. They're the same compound, or they're this, they would have the same name, right? 1,2-dichloroethene unless we include some stereochemistry in there. Are they enantiomers? So if they're stereoisomers, we have to consider, are they enantiomers of each other? Are they the mirror image of each other? And the answer there is also no, right? If you reflect this one through a mirror, you get just the same compound back. So neither one of these compounds has an enantiomer, right? Which makes sense because neither one of them has a stereocenter. There is no sp3 carbon that has four different groups attached to it in either one of these molecules. So if they're stereoisomers, so they're not identical, oops, but they are stereoisomers. So if they're stereoisomers that are not enantiomers, that means that they have to be diastereomers. Okay. So that means that we need to name them differently. Right? We can't use R and S because there's no stereo center to you know, assign priority numbers and do all that kind of thing. So what we do is we look at the relationship between the non-hydrogen the non groups. So relationship between the non-hydrogen groups. Okay, so in the first example, in the first structure, We've got chlorine on this side, chlorine on this side. If we draw a line through the double bond, right, just bisecting the double bond, these chlorines are on opposite sides of each other, right? So this would be a trans double bond, right? So this would be trans 1,2-dichloroethene. Right? On this side, or on this structure over here, right? If we draw a line through the double bond, the chlorines are on the same side of that line. And so in this case, we would this would be cis 1,2-dichloroethene. So notice that the whole name is the same because we have a two carbon parent chain. We have an alkene in there, so this is ethene. And then we have two chlorines attached to carbons one and two. So 1,2-dichloroethene is the same in both. What differentiates them is the stereoisomer, how we name it, right? So cis means that those chlorines are on the same side of the double bond. Trans means they are on opposite sides. So cis and trans are diastereomers of each other. Cis or trans. Okay. 
So this works great. This is nice, pretty easy to do, right? Just look at how the non-hydrogen groups are related to each other, unless we come across a molecule that doesn't have um, hydrogens, right? So what if we have an alkene looks like this okay so this can have a stereoisomer of it uh, I'm going to draw the stereoisomer over here so let's say in this case I'm going to switch the chlorine and the fluorine right and we can go through the same analysis right these are not the same compound because they can't overlay on top of each other they do not have they are not enantiomers so they must be diester there are stereoisomers but they are not enantiomers therefore these are also diastereomers right. so but we can't if this was the previous example, right, we would look for the non-hydrogen group, circle each non-hydrogen group and assess their relationship. Are they trans or are they cis? Unfortunately, in this case, we have three non-hydrogen groups. And so we can't say cis and trans. It doesn't quite work that way. So what we have to do is we have to use instead the EZ method, which is not called EZ because it's easy although it is pretty straightforward, but instead it's called easy because it is, these are abbreviations of German words. So I have to tell you my German language story. So when I was a high school senior, this is way back, right? A long time ago. As a high school senior, I had to register for my classes my first semester of college. And so this was before you registered for everything online. So I had to go to the college meet with a professor and like my advisor my freshman advisor and sit down and be well what do you want to do what are the classes that you should take i want to be a chemistry major okay well you should definitely take gen general chemistry you should take uh calculus because you know, whatever right like you got to have some math requirements all this other stuff and then i had to take a first term seminar and then i also had to i had one more opening in my schedule and so i wanted to finish off my language requirement and so this the, my advisor was an organic chemist and she said, well, one thing, one language that I've really found useful is, um, is German. Like there are old organic chemistry journals that are, uh, you know, written in German and all this other stuff. So you should take German. It would be really useful for you. And I'd never taken German before, but what do I know, right? I'm 18 years old. I don't know uh, what college is like or what I'm supposed to do. So she says, take German. I'm taking German. So I signed up for German one. Here's the thing about taking German in college. Uh, the people who sign up for German one are the people who took German in high school, right? And so <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people who already knew basic German and me who didn't. So uh, I struggled bad. Also, I was a freshman, so I was, you know, not that smart. So I thought, oh, I don't really, this is college. I don't need to go to class. Turns out that you do need to go to class to do well in college. I didn't know. So the worst grade I ever got German in, uh, in uh, my freshman year. But what I did get out of it is that there is no German in organic chemistry. So not only did I get the worst grade of my entire college career in this class, it's also completely useless except for right now in the EZ system. So I had to learn this. So I'm going to teach you guys this too. All right. The E stands for Entgegen, which is kind of fun to say, which just means opposite. And the Z stands for Zusammen. Thanks, that's a terrible M. Which means together. Take that C in freshman German class. Anyway, yeah, so um, now I know, so totally worth it. Okay, opposite together. And what we're comparing is we're gonna look at the, um, we're going to again assign priority numbers. For each carbon. And then compare the position of the highest priority groups. Okay, so 
let's do the first one. So we're going to look at this carbon over here. This carbon has a chlorine and a fluorine attached to it. The chlorine has the higher atomic number, so that one gets the higher priority, one and two. And so we just look at these two groups over here, and then we drop all of that, we switch to the other carbon, and we say, all right, over here, what's the highest priority group? Methyl group versus hydrogen. Methyl's higher, hydrogen is lower. Okay. Now we circle our highest priority groups. We've got a methyl group here. We've got a chlorine over here. So the highest priority groups are opposite each other. So that means this is an E alkene. So the name for this one, oh, I didn't leave myself room to, to do this. So the name for this one would be E, um, what is this? This is propene. So this is one chloro, oh, I'm not gonna have room. One fluoro, one, oh, I guess I, yeah. One propene. Yeah, that's legible. Right, but one chloro, one fluoropropene tells me, okay, the parent chain is three carbons, there's an alkene in there, and the chlorine and the fluorine are attached to carbon one. E tells me that the chlorine is opposite the highest priority group on the other side, which is the methyl group. Now, of course, if we if this is a diastereomer, we would expect this to be, I'll write this in a little bit more legible fashion, we would expect this to be Z. One chloro, one fluoro propene. And in fact, that is true, right? If we assign priority numbers this side, chlorine is higher than fluorine. On this side, the methyl group is higher than the hydrogen. And notice that our two highest priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. So they are together, which is, as we say in German, is zusammen. And that makes this one the Z double bond. So the important thing is that you only assign the priority numbers attached to each carbon. So this carbon, we assign a one and a two to that. And then we forget those numbers and start over with this carbon over here, assign a one and a two over there, right? Because even though fluorine is a higher atomic number than carbon, we're not comparing the carbon to fluorine, we're comparing the carbon to the hydrogen over here. So this gets the higher priority number. So chlorine is the highest priority on this side. Methyl group's the highest priority on this side, and then we describe their relationship. So in this case, it's E. In this case, it's Z. All right. That's the EZ system, along with my rant about taking German as a freshman in college. So now you've got, <laughs> you've got everything you came here for. Um, so E and Z is that. E and Z are diastereomers of each other. So if you're asked to provide all the stereoisomers of something, make sure that you pay attention to the double bonds because the double bonds will have cis and trans or they'll have E and Z uh, diastereomers of each other and you'll need to include those two. That concludes the stereochemistry chapter, naming stereoisomers. Uh, we've got R, S, cis, trans, E, and Z. So we've got three different systems, although E and Z and cis and trans are very, very similar to each other. Right? So naming series centers, that's what that's going to be. Uh, if you have questions or concerns about that, definitely bring them to class next week. and. Uh, I will see you there. Thanks.